Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about mastering and in specific sending your music out to a professional mastering engineer and what you need to do to prepare your music and export it properly so that you'll get the best result. Now I've talked a lot about the importance of understanding how to master your own music and absolutely that's important. What I mean by mastering your own music is when you're preparing what you would call a quick master. When I'm writing a track and I want to just test it out on the dance floor, or I want to send it to a couple of friends for some feedback, I'll do the mastering myself and that's great. But when I say, you know what, this track is done, it's ready and it's going to be professionally released, then I always, every single time, send the track out to get done by a professional mastering engineer. That's incredibly important because it's very difficult for the set of ears and the mind and the brain that created the music to understand how to professionally finish it. It should, you should have a second and objective and trained set of ears on your track before it's complete. So let's talk about what you'd do. Um, first of all, all of my tracks get mastered by a guy named Terkith at Inner Portal Studios. And I actually went to him and I asked him, what are some of the common mistakes that people make and the biggest tips that you would give them to prepare your track for mastering, specifically from Ableton? So he has six tips for us. The first tip is make sure that you are exporting in the same bit depth that you're producing in. I write all my music in 24-bit, which means I'm using wherever possible 24-bit samples. I'm recording and processing in 24-bit, and I'm exporting in 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz. Tip number two is to make sure that you leave a little bit of silence at the beginning and at the end of your track. It makes it a little bit cleaner for the mastering engineer, so what I do is I leave about eight bars one whole phrase of silence at the beginning and at the end to just ensure everything has time to decay and you have some room before the first hit comes into the track. Tip number three is to make sure that you have absolutely nothing on your master bus. Mastering engineers like to have control over what happens on the master bus and I like to give it to them because they know better than I do. A lot of people I see try and mix into compressors and limiters and other types of effects and in my opinion that's a big no-no. At no point ever should you ever have a limiter on your master bus if you're sending it to a mastering engineer. Some people think that it's good to mix into compressors. Myself personally, I don't like doing that. I find it produces bad results. It distorts my ability to understand how to balance elements well in my mix. So I would suggest you don't have anything on your master bus. If for some reason you think something is absolutely essential to the sound of your track that's on your master bus, then what Terkith says is to produce two versions, one with the plug-in chain on your master bus active and one with it deactivated with a clean master bus. And that way he has the ability to select which ones he feels he can produce the best results with. Another tip is to make sure that you leave about six decibels worth of headroom on your track. Now this doesn't mean that your fader just stays in the green and doesn't go red. What this means is that you need to ensure you're six decibels below that zero decibel peaking point. And what that does is it gives the mastering engineer a bit more headroom to work with in your track. You're not going to be peaking or clipping or even getting close. It gives them some nice breathing room to be able to produce great results with. Another thing you want to make sure to do is when you're exporting, you are going to want to ensure that normalization and the dithering functions are off in the live menu. So when you go to export your project, you'll be given an option to normalize or dither. What normalizing does is it makes it as loud as possible, basically takes and scans for the highest peak, the highest amplitude peak in your track, and then it pushes that up to be zero decibels below full scale. And you don't want that because that defeats the whole purpose of leaving the six decibels of headroom. And then dithering is something that is best left to your mastering engineer with their tools. And the very last tip for you is to make sure that when you're sending a mastering engineer your track, you don't send it to them until you are 100% satisfied with it. Because once you start the mastering process, uh, you can't make any changes, right? So if there's something you catch about it later, something you're not 100% satisfied with, mastering is pretty much counterproductive because it costs money, it costs time, and you want to make sure that your track is, you're totally satisfied with your mix. Now, if you have a great relationship with your mastering engineer and you do a lot of work through them, you may be able to send a draft track to them for some feedback. And if they're a, a nice guy, then they'll probably provide you with a little bit of feedback that'll help you to tune in your mix before sending the final to them. So that's always an option if uh, you have a mastering engineer that's willing to do that for you and take the time. 
And uh, that's pretty much it, folks. I just wanted to give you some quick tips on how to best prepare your music for the mastering stage. If you follow those, it'll make it uh, your life a lot easier because you'll get better results and it'll also make your mastering engineer a lot happier with you. So uh, hope that helps. And uh, if you guys do want to check out a great person for mastering, I would recommend you get in touch with Terkith from Inner Portal Studios. Like I said, he's mastered all my stuff. Uh, he's made bang and masters every single time. Um, he's done the work that's been released uh, from myself on iTunes and Beatport and stuff like that. So definitely highly recommended. And he's only 40 bucks a track. So it's really reasonable as far as uh, professional mastering goes. Hope you guys are doing great and talk to you real soon. Take care.